In Thailand, a roustabout was killed when a load became detached from a crane. The reason? An inexperienced crane operator and a lack of communication. In Congo, a crane was destroyed when the boom line failed and the boom fell over the side. The client's drilling program was severely disrupted and, of course, the repair was very expensive. The reason for this accident? Poor maintenance and a failure to follow Sedco Forex policies. This lift of a wellhead connector from a supply vessel went very badly wrong, as you'll see. The result was damage to the equipment, damage to the boat, and damage to the crane and lifting gear. It could have been much worse. This lift should never have been attempted in these sea conditions. All these accidents could have been prevented. In this video, we're going to show you how to work safely with and around cranes. In general, there are four reasons why accidents occur. Poor operator competence, poor equipment maintenance, poor job evaluation, poor communication. There are separate videos on crane operations and crane maintenance, and they cover a lot of information relevant to safety. So for now, we're going to concentrate on the need for proper job evaluation and then effective communication. There's a lot to consider when preparing for a new job, and you should never underestimate the importance of pre-job planning. Right, guys, we've got to go and put the selection motor down the hatch, down the starboard column. So we need, I've got, I've got the there should on. always be a pre-job meeting. Listen carefully to everything your supervisor tells you. Find out what other jobs will be going on around you and who will be working on your job. Discuss the job with everyone involved and especially the signalman. Use the pre-job meeting to select your materials for the job, such as slings, shackles and taglines. The supervisor will be able to answer your questions and give you the information you need. What sort of weight is it, George? Is it going to be a whip line lift? That'll be on the whip line. So, pay attention. And if you don't know, ask. Always assess the natural hazards that you might have to deal with during the job, such as a change in the weather. You don't want to be surprised by high winds. Just like Tom, he obviously didn't check. Make sure the area of the deck onto which you're going to place your load is properly prepared. You should protect it by laying down some wood. If the load is very heavy, make sure you discuss this with your supervisor. On a floating rig, it may be necessary to adjust the rig's ballast. If the load is particularly heavy, you must check that the boom and hoisting gear are strong enough. There are other things to consider. Could the load shift and cause a shock loading on the lifting gear? Will the load swing and possibly impose a sideways force on the boom? If you're not sure, check. It's better to be safe than sorry. It's clear that knowing the details of the loads you'll be lifting is very important. You should be given a manifest which will let you know the weight and content of the load you'll be lifting. If you don't have a manifest, don't start without it. See your supervisor immediately. We can't emphasize safety enough. On some occasions, you'll need a permit to carry out an operation. This will be because the work has been identified as potentially hazardous. For example, the load might contain explosives or chemicals, and these require special handling precautions. The permit will provide you with the correct procedure, including the conditions under which it's safe to operate and the conditions under which the job should be stopped. There are four types of permits. They are a safe work permit, 
an isolation permit, a hot work permit, and an electrical work permit. Your supervisor will inform you about the relevance of each. If a permit is needed, you must not start work without it. Let's take a look at a typical situation that requires a work permit. A load is going to be lowered into an enclosed space, and this will require the removal of a deck hatch. The work permit for this task will specify that a pre-job meeting must be held, that gas checks will be carried out in the enclosed space, that the area around the hatch must be cordoned off, that a signalman must be positioned where he can see the load and communicate with the crane operator that persons working near the open hatch will wear full body anti-fall harnesses and other important safety precautions. There will also be special situations you'll need to be aware of and take into account when operating a crane. This might be a helicopter arriving which would mean the crane boom must be placed in its rest position prior to the aircraft's approach. It's essential that you're fully informed of such events. This is one example of the importance of good communication. We'll now look at how we can achieve it. The pre-job meeting is particularly important, and this is where good communication starts. Pay attention and participate. Communication is a two-way process. At the pre-job meeting, you'll find out if a work permit is needed. The permit is an important communication tool, which allows everybody on the rig to know what's going on and where. Hand signals are the primary means of communication between the signalman and the crane operator. Sat in that crane, if there's no radio, then all you'll hear is that engine. Knowing what the person on the deck is telling you will be vital. There will be a common set of hand signals in use on your rig. It's important that you know the correct hand signals, so let's have a quick review. This is the recommended signal for use the main hoist. Use the whip line. Hoist the load. Lower the load. Raise the boom. Lower the boom. Sometimes it may be necessary for the crane operator to perform two operations simultaneously. And there are hand signals for this. Raise the boom and lower the load. This will bring the load closer to the crane, but keep it at the same height above the deck. Lower the boom and raise the load. to move the load away from the crane at the same height above the deck. Swing left. Swing right. Move slowly. Dog everything. Stop. Emergency stop. And finally, two signals that are used on land rigs only. Telescoping in. and telescoping out.
if you need to, you can refer to the crane signalling section in your HSE manual. Or you can get hold of a check card with all the signals on it. Your supervisor should be able to provide you with one. Sometimes you may be asked to communicate using a radio. This may be, for example, because the crane operator is unable to see the point at which he's picking up or unloading. However, there will also be occasions when you're asked to operate under radio silence. The most likely reason for this is when an explosive perforating gun is being prepared or run in the hole. Your radio could cause this to detonate. Without effective communication in such circumstances, the consequences could be lethal. Make sure there'll be no one walking under the loads during a lifting operation. Always keep an eye out for other personnel who might be unaware they're in danger. Tom, I wouldn't stand there if I were you. Cranes are running fine. I fueled them up for you, so you're all ready to go. The handover is an important time for communication. A lot of accidents occur just after the handover, and in general it's because there was no adequate communication. The crane operator who's going off shift should discuss any problems that have occurred with the operator coming on duty. When you start your shift, make sure you ask questions to find out what's been going on. For example, were any work permits issued that affected crane operations? Or has any repair or maintenance work been carried out on the crane? You must keep the crane logbook updated with key events, such as the number and type of loads, any unusual occurrences, and maintenance work carried out. And when filling in logbooks and forms, you must write clearly. If it can't be read, it doesn't serve any purpose. Well, there you have it. Job evaluation and good communication. Two of the key elements to operating safely. Let's just review those main points one more time. Carefully carry out your pre-job planning. Assess the conditions you'll be working in. Prepare the deck. When it comes to loads, you should consider the rig stability, special loads, special situations, Make sure you've got a manifest. Check to see if you need a permit to work. Good communication is essential for safe operations. You should always participate at the pre-job meeting. Know the correct hand signals. Hand over the crane correctly. Keep the logbook updated and legible. And report important events. Well, that's about it for this video. But remember, safety should always be on your mind, no matter what. If you follow the rules here, you'll avoid a lot of problems. For now, goodbye and good luck.